you hear the song I sing, you will understand. Listen. You hold the key to love and fear, all in your trembling hands. Just one key unlocks them both. It's there at your There's a fountain flowing from the heart of the Savior. Bring your sins and all your guilty stains. Let that river of life wash it away. the 
peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence, you won't let go. In the questions, your truth will hold. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. That's, that's really impressive. Take, a, take just a couple of minutes, stand up, greet one another, do whatever you want. Poke one another with your palms, you know, feel free. So visit a little bit. There's revival and it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. A Sunday morning, hallelujah, and it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it?
Well, welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. It is wonderful to, to see you all this morning with your, what is it, fronds? Is that what you call them? Palm fronds? Uh, Grayson, Grayson knows. Hey, I'll tell you. Take your, take your little uh, uh, fronds and wave them. Let's everybody wave them. Oh my goodness gracious! You know, I'm, I'm noticing that some of y'all have more impressive ones than others. Just, just remember. Yeah, that's good. Just remember. The, the first will be last, and the last will be first. You know, and Jesus praises humility. So, we want to remember that. Well, welcome in the name of Christ. Y'all who are streaming in, welcome on uh, this Palm Sunday. Uh, we have some announcements in the bulletin, of which you may want to take note. This is a busy week for us. Uh, right after the service this morning, everybody is invited to a, a deacon's breakfast slash brunch, whatever you want to call it is fine. Either a late breakfast, an early lunch, a brunch, that's good. Uh, in the fellowship hall, they got a whole bunch of food and somebody's going to have to eat it. So, you're going to eat it? Well, see, I think, hey, you and me, you and me, we can eat it together. <laughs> But don't tell him. All right. So we got that coming up after the, um, right after the service. Um, and you better, I mean, he's scoping stuff out. You better go there quick. Uh, we, this week we've got our Bible study on Wednesday at still at 10 o'clock. This meet, week we'll meet at 10. After this Wednesday we'll go back to 1030 on Wednesday morning. We're starting 2 Samuel. So uh, Saul is dead. Saul is dead. And now we're, we're looking at David. Uh, so if you're interested in jumping in on that study, this is a good time because we're making a, making a little shift in the story. Uh, the, Wednesday, the Thursday evening study won't meet this week because on Thursday evening we're going to have a Monday Thursday service at 6 o'clock. And if you've been before, it is sort of our version of the love feast what, that Moravians and brethren do. So the, commu the communion is part of a meal. It's not something separate, but it's part of a meal. The whole service is involved in that. So it's a really meaningful service that we do once a year, so it's not repetitive. Uh, and that's what we'll be having on, on Thursday. So I invite you to come to that. And, at six o'clock on Friday is Good Friday is a Good Friday service, and as we've done the last couple of years, we'll do a tenebrae tenebra service, and it's a service that involves the seven candles uh, of uh, of uh, of Lent. The tenebrae has seven candles, and uh, we do readings and we focus on the crucifixion because remember, without the crucifixion, there is no resurrection. Uh, sometimes we jump from Palm Sunday, which is fun, to Easter, which is fun, but you got to go through Good Friday uh, to get there for Easter to have that same meaning. So let me invite you to come to our Good Friday service uh, and invite some, anyone you might know e to either of the services uh, at 7 o'clock on Friday evening. And then, of course, on next Sunday is Easter, and we'll have a lot of a lot of fun on Easter. So, uh, are there any other announcements that anybody? Yes. The music and worship committee is going to have a really beautiful evening immediately after the church right here. And just the fine line of planning for uh, what we're doing for the rest of the week. Okay. The music and worship committee here. Thank you. Good. Anything else? Yes, Paula.
And, and the show is? Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ Superstar, which is very appropriate this time of year. So, and a wonderful, wonderful show. So let me encourage you to, to join the group and to see uh, Jesus Christ Superstar. Sign up sheet in the foyer. Thank you. Uh, any, anything else? Any other announcements? Well, we want to make, give a great big thank you for the, the evan outreach and evangelism group. Uh, Trista, what, what went on yesterday? It was, it was a big, big affair. The only thing I'm disappointed this morning is I was hoping to thank the Easter Bunny in person. Uh, yeah, he was a big hit. I don't know who he was, you know, because he had this huge head. And I figured I'd be able to recognize him with his big head. What's that? But, I, yeah, I wanted to, that's right. That's why he's not here this morning, because he has a big head, and I would recognize his big head, so I'm disappointed he's not here. What were you thinking I was saying, Barb? <laughs> yes, my goodness gracious. I was hoping he was going to be here, right? Yeah, absolutely, but he's not. So uh, that, was, that was a really good, good time yesterday. Any, anything else before we get started? Well then, brothers and sisters, as God's people, let's worship him together. Jesus said, Father, forgive these people. They don't know what they're doing. This is the word of forgiveness. Then G when Jesus replied to him, I promise that today you will be with me in paradise. This is the word of salvation. When Jesus saw his mother and his favorite disciple with her, he said to his mother, this man is now your son. Then he said to the disciple, she is now your mother. From then on, that disciple took her into his own home. This is the word of relationship. Then about that time, Jesus shouted, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? Jesus knew that he had now finished his work. In order to make scripture come true, he said, I am thirsty. These are the words of humanity. 
After Jesus drank the wine, he said, everything is done. He bowed his head and died. This is the word of triumph. And finally, Jesus shouted, Father, I put myself into your hands. Then he died. This is the word of reunion. Amen. Amanda, would you, would you come on up front, if you would, and lead us in a little bit of singing? And uh, so let's everybody rise and let's sing together, Hosanna, loud Hosanna. Thank you. And now let's sing in the name of the Lord. Outstanding. You all have a seat. And would some young people come on up and have a, have a seat right here in front of me? Well, you are mega fancy. You're going to be doing something in just a little bit, aren't you? Yes, indeed. Hey, hey, and the good news is I'm going to join you. <laughs> but I've worked on my routine. Look at that. No? No. Still no? Okay. Hey, hey. How you, how you all doing? Good, good, good. Anything exciting? 
No, that's good. Because sometimes I say, anything exciting happened, and you know what y'all do? Y'all do this. But this time, anything exciting in your hand went right up. The gala was yesterday? What is the gala? What's the gala? I don't know what the gala is. What is it? Oh, did y'all dance? Oh, man. Yesterday? Ray Ray did too? No. No, she did. You didn't dance in the gala. Was it personal? It wasn't anything personal, was it? Uh, what, now, the gala's a big dance, right? Like a presentation where you have different people dancing. Yeah, okay. And is it is it in Pittsburgh? No, but it's very Oh, wow. It's in Franklin. So and and you danced London. What well, what did you what was the music? What was your dance? Did you dance one time or did you dance No, only two. You did two times. What what were your dance numbers? Do you remember? Hero and Disco. Okay. That sounds, sounds like something that I could identify with. Because I could do disco. No. <laughs> no. Okay. And, and what, what did you dance? Um, <laughs> a lot. You, you danced a few times. Yes. Yes. Um, trio, two duos. Tr trio, two duos. Uh, that makes five. No, trio mean? and two duos. Thirteen dances. Wow. You must have been tired after thirteen. Yeah, you were a little tired after thirteen dances. You did piano? Well, piano's important. What did you what was your piano piece? Oh, oh, from um uh Little Mermaid? Okay, I got you. Hey, so that was exciting. You you had your hand up? What do you what exciting thing happened? Yesterday was your brother's birthday. How old was your brother? Three years old. Do you remember when you were three? Yeah. You do remember when you were three. What did it feel like to be three? It felt weird to be three. Yeah, I, ima I imagine it, it did. See, I don't remember what it felt like to be three. Yeah. Yes, I am old. Yes, thank you for sharing that. Yes. I don't remember when I was 33. Uh, that seems like a, a distant memory. I'm not on. <laughs> well, that, thank you very much, London. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm 60 something. Yeah, let's move on to something else. Anything new and exciting happen? No, nothing new and exciting. Hey, what's that? 60. Yeah, almost. Almost 67. Almost 67. Almost 67. Almost 67. My birthday is coming up. I'm 66, yes. You know, I'm almost 67, and you know what they say. Your 67th birthday is the big one. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm making that up. I don't, I don't know. So, hey, but we, you know, I ask if there's something exciting happened in your last week. And y'all shared, and this was really good. It is exciting. But we have something exciting happening right now. Guess what it is? No, no, this isn't, I'm talking about Brunch Bunch, that's exciting, yes, not, not, most of them there are a little older than six, but, you know, Brunch Bunch is an exciting group, what's that, Palm Sunday, yeah, Palm Sunday's exciting, more exciting than that, more exciting than that, what's that, you don't know, you have a guess, more exciting than Palm Sunday, you got a guess, more exciting, you got a guess, Yes! Give me five. Yes, sir. She's going to dance for us. So you know what we're going to do? We are going to, and Anderson is, is Miss Petite, Petite Dance Pennsylvania. Petite <laughs> Miss Dance of Pennsylvania. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check on this. Yeah, Petite Miss Dance of Pennsylvania. Wow. The whole state? So you are the one, the petite dancer in all of Pennsylvania. No wonder you dance 13 times. 
yesterday. Yeah, that sounds like a good, that sounds like the right number. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to move right there and we're going to sit in that pew right close next to Jordan or in, his, in the neighborhood and we are going to watch you dance. And are you sure you don't want me to... Yeah, thank you very much, Jordan. <laughs> this is the story of a bird with no wings, but certain that it can fly. Sailing on love into the headwinds, forcing its way by and by. If only we were as strong as this bird, our spirit would never die. What do we name it? Hope is the right word. Hope is the bravest, most beautiful bird. In the sky Hope is a bird that Flies higher than others And keeps all our dreams alive Free of all doubt Perfectly fearless Fed by its will to survive Imagine ourselves this bird we can when we dare to try and see ourselves flying over the mountain hope is the bravest most beautiful bird in the sky only hope story of a bird without wings and rose above everything never was given up And the bird has just flown, flown out. Okay, guys, stand. Okay, first, here. Let me give you both because you were kind of on the edge. Here. Okay, and here. Now, what do you want to say? What do we want to say? If we say, God loves us, we say, God loves us. Happy Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday. Okay, okay, okay. Let's turn around. And I want you all to have an exciting, thrilling, great week. And what do I want you to remember all week long? God loves us. Happy Palm Sunday. Happy Palm Sunday, yes. Okay, y'all can head on. Head on back. Well... We now come to the part of the service when we got the opportunity to uh, lift our prayers up to God. Now, on the back of the bulletin, we've got a whole bunch of Pacific prayer requests that we want to remember as we move into the next week. Are there any updates or additions? I'm sorry, I, it was a little indigestion. Uh, it must have been what I ate last night, but don't hold it against me. Uh, any any additions or updates to anything on the on the prayer list? Yeah. 
Yes. It, it's a joy not just for you, Alan. I think it's a joy for us all. So welcome back, Buff. Now you won't have to drink. Oh, we're not supposed to say that out loud, are we? Yeah. <laughs> and he, oh, oh. He, he, he said something derogatory. <laughs> he was complimenting you on your beauty this, this, this morning. <laughs> right? Yes. Am I not? Yes. Right, right. <laughs> yes, Cass. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. I think Diane, because Diane does an awful lot. She does, I don't think she gets a lot of applause. So, I think Diane deserves a round of applause. And remember, she, was, she did that painting thing the, the other day. So, we got works of art all over the place. You know, so, yes. Oh my goodness. Oh, broke his arm jumping off a couch. Oh my goodness. Oh, of course not. Sisters never have. Have anything to do, older sister? Oh no, I'm sure of that. <laughs> of course, because that's the first thing. S avoid responsibility. Yes, but we'll certainly pray for it. What's his first name? Jack. Jack. Okay, we want to pray Jack for Jack. Yes. <laughs> Carrie is, is doing well, but she still needs, needs prayer. And, you know, our brother Grayson needs a little prayer, too, because you're still getting over your, your surgery, right? Feeling better, though. Yeah. Are you eating anything you want now? Can you eat everything you want? Okay, well, that's what's important, that you can do that. So that's, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Anything else we want to remember? Peg is doing better. Okay, knee's a little sore. It's new. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Okay, so we, but we want to continue to pray for, for her. Uh, for, well, for both of y'all. Yeah, that'd be good. Uh, yeah. Dan Oak. Yeah, he, um, was just about a year now, what's his name again? Dan Oaks. We want to pray for Dan Oaks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Dale? Dale. Okay. Any, yes? So we want to pray for you as you, you have the, the testing. Yes, thank you. Anything else? Uh, Lori, I know you can't see me, so I'm going to shout out. Lori, uh, she spent uh, Friday and Saturday but, uh, in the hospital. She developed a blood clot in her leg, and it went to the lung, pulmonary embolism. But she's home resting. They put her on heparin and Gibraltar or something like that. But yeah, she just developed this lung, or 
No, it developed this clot and it went to her lung. So okay. Hopefully they got it. I mean, seems to. Everything else, they did a CT scan and all the kinds of tests and yeah. So we want to. It's still there. I guess I always thought when they give you the blood thinner, it's supposed to get rid of the clot. It don't really get rid of the clot. It just makes it so the blood can get around it. Oh. And hopefully it just goes away on its own. Oh, so okay. This clot in it. Okay, so we definitely want to yeah. pray for Lori. Yeah. Okay, okay, thanks. Thanks. Any, anything else? Well, let's go to God in prayer, and uh, I'll open and pray for a little bit. Then y'all will have the opportunity to lift your prayers to God, and then we'll close with the Lord's Prayer. So let's go before God now in prayer. Lord God, before we say anything else, we got to thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here this, this morning. My goodness gracious. It is, a, it is a wonderful privilege to gather in your name, to celebrate your presence, and to feel your love flowing around your people. So, so thank you for giving us a chance to be together. Now, in just a little bit, we're going to hear your word read and proclaimed. But before we get there, there's something that we need to confess. Uh, your son lived, and through his life, he gave us an example of, of how to live. And he preached, and through his preaching, he gave us a message that's, that's meaningful, not to us, but to, to everybody. And then he died, and through that death, uh, he broke the power of sin and freed us from this bondage under which we live. And, and that's what your, your son did. And then he ascended and rejoined you. And so he's not here. And instead of sharing the kind of life he lived and the message he preached and the salvation that he won, we often remain silent. Through our words and through our works, we don't tell others about your son and our Savior. Whether it's because we, we assume it's going to be done by someone else or whether we're just uncomfortable talking about something as, as personal as, as faith, we don't share it. And as a result, there are a lot of folks who never hear it. Or if they do hear it, they hear it conveyed through distorted sources. And when that happens, when we fail to be your witnesses, we ask for your grace and your mercy because that's not what you've called us to be. You didn't call us to be still and silent. You've called, you called us through the love we show and the, the message we convey to be your spokesman in this world. So, so, Lord, help us to do that. In the name of Christ, we pray. And now in the privacy of our own heart, we're going to lift up to you the concerns that we heard shared. We're going to lift up to you the needs that are there in the bulletin. And we're going to lay before you all those things that weigh heavy on our heart. Lord God, hear us as we pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for loving us as much as you do. And thank you for listening to us when we pray. But right now, thank you for forgiving us if we believe that we've been forgiven. We've been cleansed. And thank you for responding to our needs because we've lifted these needs up to you in the name of Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now would the ushers come forward to collect our offering. prophetic he healed the blind and the lame upon an ass a triumphant entry a city cries Hosanna blessed is he the Lord our Let's have a word of prayer. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to make this offering to you. Guide and direct the leaders of this congregation that these are gifts may be put to good and effective use. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. Now, I, I assume y'all have noticed the palm branches here this morning, right? You've, you've noticed that. You've noticed that? Uh, now, you know that can mean only one of two things. I mean, either the session voted on Wednesday evening to send us all to Florida for a special congregational meeting, and this is a way of preparing us, or today is Palm Sunday, exactly right. That wonderful Sunday right before Easter when the deacons invite us all to a breakfast slash brunch immediately after the service. And kids and teachers 
administrators as well get a three-day work week. And, he, and, of course, we remember Jesus' triumphant entry into Jerusalem. I mean, just listen to what the evangelist Luke, or how the evangelist Luke describes it. He wrote, Then the disciples led the donkey to Jesus. They put their clothes on its back and helped Jesus get on. As he rode along, the people spread clothes on the road in front of him. When Jesus started down the Mount of Olives, his large crowd of disciples were happy and praised God because of all the miracles they had seen it. They shouted, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to God. Now, that's what we're celebrating today. But, of course, that's not all. I mean, since this is the last Sunday before we get to Easter, we're also finishing up a series that we started about five weeks ago entitled, The Last Seven Words of Christ or the last words of Christ, seven sayings from the cross. And as you all remember, during that time, we've heard words of forgiveness and salvation from Luke. And we've heard words of relationship and triumph from John. And we've heard words of humanity from, both, from Matthew and Mark, as well as also from John. Now, that's what we've done over the last month or so. And this morning, we're going to bring it all home by looking at the last words Jesus said according to the evangelist Luke. This is what he wrote. Jesus shouted, Father, I put myself in your hands. Then he died. Now, that's what it says in Luke. And I'll tell you, I find that really interesting. You see, it would seem to me, at least for the third evangelist, as he died, Jesus anticipated his coming reunion with his heavenly Father. That seems to be what these words are kind of getting at. And I'll tell you, that's going to be our focus this morning. You see, we're going to consider two lessons I believe we can learn from these words, these last words from Christ. And hopefully by the time we settle into uh, a plate of scrambled eggs and sausage and bacon, please inhale. Yes, sir. Before we, we do that, we'll have a much better idea about why his return was important back in the day and how it might shape the way we choose to live as Christians right now. And like I said, both these lessons are grounded in these seven words spoken by Christ from, his, from the cross, according to Luke. For example... I think these words show us in no uncertain terms that since he was returning to the Father, Jesus knew his mission on earth was ending. Now, for me, that's the first lesson that we can take from what he said. You see, according to Luke, right before Jesus told that faithful criminal, remember we talked about him a few weeks ago, I promise that today you will be with me in paradise. This is what happened. Around noon, the sky turned dark and stayed that way until the middle of the afternoon. The sun stopped shining and the curtain in the temple split down the middle. Jesus shouted, Father, I put myself in your hands. Then he died. Now, that's what Jesus said. And I think that's important, and I'll tell you why. By putting himself in his father's hands, by having that be the last thing Jesus said, I think he recognized that he was approaching the end of his ministry here on earth. A mission that, that really involved two very important things. I mean, on one hand, his mission was about power, wasn't it? And I'm talking about something that really, that was really special, something really special he'd received from God. In fact, a source of inspiration that he carried with him throughout his ministry. Jesus had power. 
And I'll tell you, according to Luke, he received this power right before he had done anything else. Just listen to what the evangelist Luke wrote in the third chapter of his gospel. While everyone else was being baptized, Jesus himself was baptized. When Then as he prayed, the skies opened up and the Holy Spirit came down upon him in the form of a dove and a voice from heaven said, You are my son and I am pleased with you. You see, before he had said a single parable and before he had healed a single leper and before he had performed a single miracle, the Holy Spirit came and rested on Jesus. And I'll tell you, that spirit was really important in shaping and empowering what Jesus did. I mean, that spirit was with him when the devil tested him. Remember, three times in the wilderness, the spirit was there. And it was with him as he offered thanks to his father for revealing the truth to folks like us. The spirit was there. And it was with him when he was in Gethsemane. And when with, with, with sweat coming down like drops of blood, he prayed, Father, if you will, please don't make me suffer by drinking from this cup. But do what you want and not what I want. The Spirit was there. Now that was the power that drove his mission. A mission Jesus knew was ending when he was facing death on a cross. But that's not all we know about his mission. Because on the other hand, it was also about a message. And you know, it was a message that Jesus shared throughout his life on earth to everybody who would listen to it. And I'll tell you, if we want to know what that message was, man, it's not hard to find. Because the same good news that he shared the very first time he spoke to a group of people, at least according to Luke, was the same message he shared all the way to the end. I mean, after he had been baptized and after he had been, he'd endured all this temptation from the devil. Jesus went back to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And as usual, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath. When he stood up to read from the scriptures, he was given the book of Isaiah the prophet. He opened it and read, The Lord's Spirit has come upon me. Because he has chosen me to tell the good news to the poor. The Lord has sent me to announce freedom for prisoners, to give sight to the blind, to free everyone who suffers, and to say, this is the year the Lord has chosen. Jesus closed the book, then handed it back to the man in charge and sat down. Everyone in the synagogue looked straight at Jesus. Then Jesus said to him, what you have just heard me read has come true today. Now, that was the message he came to share. And I'll tell you something, that was really the focus of his ministry. I mean, whether it was through the lessons that he taught or the miracles that he performed, Jesus was all about bringing the good news to those who needed to hear it the most. Man, announcing freedom and announcing hope and announcing peace. This was his mission. This is what he came to do. And I'll tell you, this mission was not only empowered by the Spirit, it was also centered on a message that was clear and simple. Something that Jesus knew would soon be coming to a conclusion when he died. You see, when Jesus said, Father, I put myself in your hands, I think he realized that since he was returning to the Father, his mission on earth was ending. And for me, that's the first lesson we can draw from these words. But I don't think it's the only thing we can take from what Jesus said as he died there on that cross. You see, second, based on these same words, I think we can also learn that since his mission had ended, 
guess what? Our mission was beginning. And I'll tell you, that just makes sense. I mean, since he was no longer going to be around himself, we, his disciples, we, the people who, who choose to respond to his call, we, the folks who follow him, right? We are now going to be the ones to continue his work. And you know, I think, we, I think we can see what I'm talking about in another story that came after the crucifixion and the resurrection, but before Jesus was officially reunited with his father. I mean, listen to what Luke wrote this time in the book of Acts. Jesus said to them, you don't need to know the time of those events that only the father controls. But the Holy Spirit will come upon you and give you power. Then you will tell everyone about me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and everywhere in the world. After Jesus had said this, and while they were watching, he was taken up into a cloud. They could not see him, but as he went up, they kept looking into the sky. Suddenly two men dressed in white clothes were standing there beside him. They said, why are you men from Galilee standing here and looking up into the sky? Jesus has been taken into heaven, but he will come back in the same way you have seen him go. Now that's what Luke wrote. And just think about what it means. You see, once Jesus had returned to his father... Now it was time for his followers to pick up his mantle and to start doing his work. In other words, since he was no longer physically around, it was now up to them to become his people. And it was now up to them to become his voice. And it was now up to them to continue his mission. And I'll tell you something, what was true to them way back in the day, is true to us. And although I know on the surface that would seem to be an impossible job to do, I mean, how could we possibly do the work of Jesus Christ himself? That's ridiculous, right? We can't do that. I'll tell you something. To accomplish it, God has given us the same thing that Jesus had. The same thing that Jesus had. For example, just like Jesus' mission was all about power, friends, we have power too. In other words, we've also received something very special from God. And we carry an incredible source of inspiration today and tomorrow and right to our end. Man, we have power. May not use it, but we have it. And guess what? It comes from the exact same reality that descended and rested on Jesus at his baptism. Just listen to how Luke described it in Acts. On the day of Pentecost, all the Lord's followers were together in one place. Suddenly there was a noise from heaven like the sound of a mighty wind. It filled the house where they were meeting. Then they saw what looked like fiery tongues moving in all directions. And a tongue came and settled on each person there. The Holy Spirit took control of everyone. And they began speaking whatever languages the Spirit let them speak. You see, the same Spirit, the same Spirit that rested on Christ throughout his life rests on who? Us. It rests on us right here and right now. And that spirit can move us forward in spite of difficulties. And that spirit can move us forward in spite of opposition. And that spirit can move us forward in spite of our own weaknesses and fears and doubt. But even more than that, that spirit can, can open our, our eyes and our minds, and our hearts, and our hands, so that we can see, and understand, and feel, and serve. 
I'm telling you right here and right now, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, rests on us. And even though Jesus is no longer physically here anymore, our mission is also about power. But that's not the only thing we because just like Jesus' mission was all about a message, ours must be too. And I'll tell you, the message is exactly the same. It's just like what Peter said right after receiving the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. Now, listen to what I have to say about Jesus from Nazareth. God proved he sent Jesus to you by having him work miracles, wonders, and signs. All of you know this. God had already planned and decided that Jesus would be handed over to you. So you took him and had evil men put him to death on a cross. But God set him free from death and raised him to life. Death couldn't hold him in its, pa in its power. Now, this is the message. And you know, it doesn't matter whether we share it through the words we use or the love and kindness we show. We're doing the same thing that Jesus Christ himself did. Paraphrasing what Mary said even before Jesus was born. We're announcing the one who came to scatter those who are proud. The one who drags strong rulers from their thrones and puts humble pe people in places of power. The one who gives the hungry good things to eat and sends the rich away with nothing. And using the words of Peter, we're inviting all those around us to turn to God and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of their sins and assuring them that they will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This promise is for them and their children. In fact, it's for everyone our Lord God will choose no matter where they live. Now, that's what we have to offer the world. That's the message. You see... As it was for him, our mission is also about a message. You see, when Jesus said, Father, I put myself in your hands, I think he was recognizing that since his mission had ended, our mission to the world was what? Beginning. And because of that, now it's up to us as his people to continue his work. And for me, that's the second lesson we can, we can take from these words. Of course, these are words from the cross, right? Today is still Palm Sunday, right? And Palm Sunday is the day we celebrate Jesus' return to Jerusalem and not his departure from the earth. I mean, although both days are important, Certainly in terms of mood and energy, they really don't seem to have a whole lot in common, right? But I'll tell you, I do believe there's a link, particularly with these words Jesus said. Especially when we hear the whole Palm Sunday story. You see, after Jesus had entered the city with people shouting, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory to God. This is how it ended. Some Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, Teacher, make your disciples stop shouting. But Jesus answered, If they keep quiet, these stones will start shouting. You see, when Luke wrote, Jesus shouted, Father, I put myself into your hands. Then he died. I believe he was offering us two lessons that we can learn and apply. First, that Jesus was returning to his father, or first, since Jesus was returning to his father, his mission on earth was ending. And second, that since his mission had ended, our mission 
was just beginning. In other words, and here's where I think there's the link. Since Jesus is now silent, right? Because he's returned to God. And since we now have the same mission he had with the same power and the same message, maybe it's our time to become like those stones in Jerusalem and to start shouting. You see, maybe this is the challenge in these words of Jesus from the cross. The word of reunion. Amen. Let's pray together. Lord God, it's now our job. You sent your son and he lived giving us a wonderful example, and he died giving us freedom, and he rose, you caused him to rise again, giving us great hope. This was done, and then he ascended to you. This is good news to us. We appreciate it. But now we have your Holy Spirit resting on us, and we know this remarkable, remarkable story that can not only change lives, but can change the entire world. We know it. Now help us to share it with the world. Help us to share it, even if that involves inviting one person to come and hear it as well. Help us to accomplish your mission because it's now ours. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Now, before we close the service, uh, I offer to you all this invitation. If there's anybody here who might feel the grace of Jesus Christ, the love of God, and is interested in how he or she might respond, talk to me after the service. If you've got a question about the service, or the sermon, come and talk to me about that as well. We'll be doing it over a plate of food, maybe muffins. Yeah, I thought you'd like that. All right, let's all stand and let's close. And Amanda, would you come on up here and would you lead us in singing Rejoice the Lord is King.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Amanda, for doing such an outstanding job with the singing. Thank you, Aniston, for dancing so, so well. The only thing I could think would have made it better is if I had been up there. <laughs> no. You know, I could be li little Mr. Petite dance of Pennsylvania. No. How about old man? Dance a pet? No. What's that, Mr. Petit? Oh, no, Mr. Petit this year. Oh, that's kind of a sh that's kind of a shame. I guess they've all. Yes. Oh, that's right. <laughs> hey, hey. Then, ha ha ha. What's that? Well, you know that's. <laughs> you know, you know, Casey. That's exactly what crossed my mind. Uh, yeah, let's move on. Uh, <laughs> but thank you for, for dancing. Of course, Dan, thank you for doing a good job on the board. Scott, I love those trills that you put there at the end between verses. That's outstanding. And Jordan, keeping me straight. I appreciate it. Now, brothers, now I'm going to do two things. One, I'm going to say a little prayer, blessing the food. It means that you can leave here and start fighting your way to the front of the line with a clear conscience. So I'm going to bless that, and then I'm going to dismiss y'all. So let's have a little word of grace. Lord God, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to share the food and the conversation we're about to share. Bless us as we do it. Keep us mindful of your love and grace and, and make us anxious to share your message through the words we use and the lives we live. Help us to do that. Bless us as we share this meal. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go now in peace. And remember, God... Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. We're milling around now. I haven't given you a benediction yet. That was just a grace. I just prayed a grace. So, yeah, get back, Deb. Okay, yeah, you can, you can do that. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, go now in peace. And remember, we have the power. And we have the message, the same power and the same message that Jesus had. Help us to claim one and proclaim the other. And to empower this walk, receive the blessing. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And it's spreading like a wildfire in my heart. A Sunday morning, hallelujah. And it's lasting all week long. Can you hear it? Can you feel it?
Steal my joy.